Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome to another acrylic painting tutorial. On today's painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous beach scene. I'm going to teach you how to paint clouds, how to block in the sea, how to use colours and tones for things like cools and lights for highlights and shadows so you can create this amazing sunset beach. So let's get into it. Okay, so the colors you're gonna need for today's painting tutorial are blue, white, yellow, orange, purple, brown, and black. And please have a hair dryer just for drying your work in stages of the video. So we've got a eight by 10 inch canvas that all I've done is painted burnt sienna as usual. And I've used white chalk just to create a brief outline. So we're gonna have our sky up here. We're going to have some land, just some mountains in the distance. We're going to have our sun just here. And we're going to have this as our water and this as the wet sand. It's going to reflect the same light as the sun. And this is our sand. So hopefully the light's going to shine down and create a really nice effect. And we're going to darken our corners just so we have everyone looking straight down into where our sun is. So a really nice easy composition so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is get some brown and some orange and a little bit of white and we're just going to paint, block in everything so we're going to block in our sand. Now don't worry if your sand or any of your painting at this stage is really scruffy. When you're first adding paint, especially acrylic paint, it's going to be very streaky, it's quite watery. So sometimes you've got to do extra layers. So all we're going to do is we're going to take some brown, purple and a little bit of blue. And we're just going to darken up that corner. So as I say, we're just going to try to layer the paint on. So don't worry if it's streaky or if it's scruffy. That's to be quite expected with acrylics. But we just want to get everything blocked in just so we know where everything is. And then we can start working on it with detail as we go along. So just add a bit more brown, a little bit of black and a little bit of dark blue and just really darken up that corner. So if you can try to use quite a big brush and just sort of blend the tones together. But as I say, don't worry about if it's streaky or messy. We're going to work on all the areas as we go along. It's just to block it in. So we want to darken up this corner because that's where it's, we're going to sign and just darken up the bottom of your picture because obviously that just kind of frames it to the viewer's eye. Now we're going to block in the wet sand, so all I'm going to do, I'm just going to add some yellow and white to that mix and a little bit of orange. And I'm just going to create a sort of creamy sort of tan colour. And again, it's just to block it in. So if it's streaking, you have lots of the burnt sienna shining through, that's fine. It's just to block in the area so I know which part is the wash. And all this is is the wet sand that when a wave retracts back into the water, it kind of leaves that really nice glimmering sand in its wake. And it's just the wet area of the water. So if you just add a bit of yellow and white, I'm just using Naples yellow, which is just yellow and white. And I'm just putting a bit of heat around that area around the sun, because obviously that's going to be shining down straight from the sun. Now if you take some white, some purple and blue, but lots and lots of white and you create a nice cool tone, this is going to be all the sort of froth of the water as it sort of hits the shore, so all the sort of froth of the wave. So all we're doing is just purple, blue and lots and lots of white. And I'm going to mix some yellow and orange and I'm just going to put yellow, orange and white below there and just block in this water area. Now if you take a little bit more yellow and white, it's just to heat up that area because obviously that's going to be under the sun so that's going to be a little bit warmer. Now we're going to add, make a really nice sort of grey blue colour. So that brown that we, we were using, we're going to add some white, a little bit of purple and some blue. And we're going to just create a really sort of greyish colour. And it's still got a bit of heat in it, so it's still got the bit of the mix from the orange and the yellow. And what that does, it just cools the area of water. Now remember, this is all the underpainting. So all this is, is the cool area where it's getting less heat from the sun and it's fading off into the distance. Just try to blend the tones together. But as I say, don't worry if it's scruffy, it's to be expected. So 
already it's starting to create a light effect you can see already it's already starting to trick your eye and we haven't even got going so we're going to add some blue and black to that mix and we're just going to block in roughly where we're going to have some mountains so i think i did my mountains a bit too big so i'm just going to do a little bit smaller one and wipe away that chalk that's the great thing about chalk you can just wipe it away and paint over it so i'm just blocking in just roughly where i'm going to have these cliffs and the same on this side and again this is just to try frame the composition just so we have the viewer concentrating roughly down the middle where the sun and the light is going to go so I'm just going to do our sky now so I'm going to take some Naples yellow which is just yellow and pure white so lots of white and some yellow and we're just going to go around our sun and just make it really nice and bright now as it gets further from the light source the sky in the background is going to get cooler so we're going to get some purple and lots and lots and lots of white so yellow bits of purple lots and lots of white and a dab of light blue and we're just going to create this really nice sort of bridge tone it's like a lavender with a hint of yellow so it's just a really really nice pastel tone and what that does again it's just going to trick your eye if you imagine we're starting right at the back so we're going to add a little bit of heat to it we're just going to add a little bit of orange to that mix a tiny bit of purple lots of white if you imagine we're going right to the back to this far off distance and we're just trying to put in all the sky tone now the sky is going to be very warm around the sun so it's going to be very yellow and orange and before it fades into blue it's a big jump between yellow and orange and blue so what we're going to do is we're going to use purple and white to create this lavender tone and a little bit of yellow and what that does is it tricks your eye and it doesn't make the transition look so harsh between yellowy orange and blue it's a nice bridge tone that just kind of tricks the eye now as i say don't worry if it's scruffy we're going to refine everything it's just to block it in it's just to get all your colors right so we can work on them and refine it so don't worry if the burnt sienna is shining through now please dry it with a hairdryer before we go to the next stage because we're going to add lots of white and a dab of blue and a tiny bit of purple and we're just going to mix the tones together now the reason if you could please dry your work it's because blue and yellow make green so you don't want to have a horrible mix on your painting where you get um, a horrible green tone so now this area is dry all I'm doing is taking that blue that we took earlier which was just a bit of blue lots of white and a little bit of purple just to cool it down a bit see purple cools everything down so all we're gonna do is we're gonna use that same tone that bit darker blue but it's still very pastel very pastel tone we're going to use that just to darken up our corners and we're just going to mix the two tones together but as you can see now even though it looks really really scruffy it looks really really rough it's already oh, got a big blot there it's already starting to trick your eye so obviously if you dry it with a hair dryer we can just rework everything so let's neaten everything up now so we're just going to put a second layer on and as you can see just from now just putting a second layer on when your canvas is dry how easy the painting goes on and now you've got a under layer underneath it you can see how much brighter all the tones are going to be so we're going to use yellow and white again and we're just going to add some heat to that mix so we're just going to add some yellow a little bit of that lavender tone and lots of orange and a tiny bit of warm gray so a tiny bit of black just to desaturize it and we're just going to really create a really nice sort of hot tone but it's still very pastel and can you see now just by having a dry canvas and just putting a second layer of paint on you can see clearly how much brighter the tones are and how much easier it is to blend so if your work is very streaky you can just add layers on top of it by just drying it with a hairdryer. So I'm going to take some bright yellow because this area around the sun is going to be at its most brightest because the sun is incredibly bright. And I'm just going to blend that pastel tone that we've just mixed in. I'm just going to rework where we've gone over bits. Now, purple and white, as I say, and a tiny bit of blue, just a tiny bit. We'll create that lovely lavender tone 
but it's still got a little bit of heat in it, it's still got a bit of orange and a bit of yellow in it. So we're just going to use that tone before we obviously do the blue again. So we're just going to neaten everything up. Now we've blocked everything in, we're just going to neaten our sky and try to get the transitions a bit nicer. So by just using a big brush, let's just lump it on. Let's just try to get some of the streaks out. Look, you can still see the streaks. As I say, with acrylics, that happens a lot. I know just want from watching a lot of tutorials and a lot of other artists, I think because sometimes they're on a time-lapse video, you don't notice all these streaks and things, but it's part and parcel with acrylics. So don't worry if your work is like that. Just by, as I say, just drying it, reworking it, just drying it, reworking it. It's very um, tedious, but it's not hard. So just by adding a little bit of orange and yellow just at the bottom just of that mix just trying to create the heat coming up from that sunlight I'm just trying to cover as much of the underpainting just to make it look really nice and pretty so I'm just going all the way up to the middle of the canvas so but just taking a bigger brush you can try to blend the tones in while they're still wet so just by using some orange and yellow just at the bottom we're just trying to create a nice sort of heat source so again with the yellow just while the the painting is still a bit wet we're just trying to blend those two just so this the transitions are a bit lighter that you don't notice them too much on that eye so as i say it's already starting to create a light effect so let's just put some pure white for our sun so we know where it is and we're going to dry it again because we're going to do the blue trick so we don't want a horrible green color so all we're going to do is take a nice dry brush lots and lots of white and a little bit of blue and we're just going to with the dry big brush just blend it into that lovely lavender and all I'm doing is I'm kind of creating X shapes with my brush and as I come down into the lavender I'm just really lightly letting up on the brush just so it just kind of blends into that tone and then we're going to add more blue and a little bit of purple to the mix as we go up just to cool it right down and while it's wet we're just going to blend it into that tone and just try to cover up so just like the bottom where we've darkened the very edges and the corners we're just trying to frame the picture just so it's got a nice frame to it just by using that darker tone just to frame the composition so look just by creating little X's we're just blending the tones together it's much easier if you use a big brush by the way because the bigger the brush just more it'll blend together it's just really easy just literally hardly any pressure you just blend the two tones together now if you have any streaks and you can see any underpainting that you don't like just literally take the big brush dry it and just literally just go over the top just like the lighter tones the reason I paint my canvas burnt sienna is just so I can tell which areas need work because I can see it's all the streak marks so just by fast forwarding it there you can see we're already starting to create a gorgeous light effect so let's start doing the clouds and let's start building this up now we've got that lovely transition so we're going to take that really nice pastel orange which is just yellow orange and lots of white and a tiny bit of purple and we're just going to create some clouds now because they are closest to the sun they are going to be really really bright and very pastel and we're going to add a little bit of purple more and we're just going to get darker by just adding a little bit of gray to that mix it's so a little bit of black just a dot of black and what it is is the sun is going to be extremely hot so everything around it's going to be yellow and orange and as you get further away from the sun we're going to add more purple to the mix so a little bit of purple same mix so it's still really pastel but we're just adding a tiny bit of purple because it's going to get cooler as it gets further away from the sun so by just using a smaller brush and just adding a little bit of that pastel tone we're going to start building up our clouds and try to work on the transitions between the hots and the colds so let's add more purple and a little bit of gray now to make a warm gray all you have to do is add black white and orange and just add a little bit of purple to that and you'll get this lovely sort of pastel gray color but don't put too much black in because you'll overwhelm it so it's orange a little bit of black and some purple and lots of white 
you should get this really nice sort of warm grey. So I find with clouds what I do is I use a smallish brush and I tip the brush sideways and I kind of scrape it against the canvas and just try to create shapes with the brush. So I kind of tip it sideways and I just kind of make little shapes with it as it drags across the canvas. So again we're just going to add more orange and purple because it's getting further from the sun, a little bit of that warm grey and it's just getting a bit darker. And again, it's this transition. So look, all I'm doing is tipping my brush sideways and I'm just drawing little squiggles, just sort of areas, all these sort of floater clouds. But can you see now it's a little bit darker already, it's starting to trick the eye. It's already starting to look a bit realistic. And it's not because of any detail, it's all because of the tones. So I keep trying to emphasize this with all these beginners painting tutorials and all these intermediate videos if you work on your tones first and then as you get better with your drawing skills and your composition skills and then you put all of them together you'll be unstoppable so nail the tones first and then work on all your actual skills so look just making little shapes as I say like the clouds go around the dome it's just going round and round so we're just trying to create sort of look like they're fading off into the distance and you see now just by using a darker tone it's that underpainting behind it the transition of the sky that's already tricking your eye and with the combination of the darker clouds so look we're going to add more warm gray to that mix more purple and a little bit of orange Let's see this is going to be much darker it's that underpainting, the background sky is already starting to trick your eye and these areas which are furthest from the light are going to be the most shadowed and they're going to be the darkest. So by just using that tone, it's still very pastel so you don't want it to be too overbearing because remember acrylics always dry a little bit darker so don't make it too dark. I'm just going to just emphasize the shadows on some of our clouds and the reason we're putting the shadows on first is because the one we put the highlights on in a minute they're going to really really pop because we've got a nice dark tone for them to work against so it's a nice contrast between the two so I love painting clouds my wife is Spanish and she's from a little island called Ibiza so I'm forever watching sunsets sitting on the beach sitting with my family watching the sunset it's a tradition out in Ibiza and with all this pandemic going on I've really really missed my family out there and I've really missed being out there it's not the same when you're sitting in rainy London <laughs> homeschooling your daughter it really isn't so I love to paint clouds I find it really therapeutic really really nice I know that a lot of people are having a tough time of late with the pandemic so obviously um, trying to take your mind off things giving you these tutorials art is a great stress relief by concentrating on one thing by also making something that you can be proud of and by staying in the now by working on something and just clearing your mind and just relaxing and flowing with your artwork it's a great way to chill out and relax and to um, beat stress because you're staying in the now and you're not worrying about things you haven't got any anxiety and things because you're concentrating on one thing so all I'm doing here is I'm adding some yellow and white just to create a light effect around my clouds and my sun and all I'm doing is I'm just going to add some yellow, orange and a little bit of purple and while all we were doing the darker clouds this area is all dry and I'm just going to rework it and what I'm going to try to do is I'm just trying to make the transitions between that nice warm grey and the orange just a bit nicer just using a blender brush and by just adding a in a minute a little bit of purple to the mix and creating sort of a brownie orange I just want to create a bridge tone just so the transitions aren't so harsh on the eyes so by just adding a little bit of brown a little bit of brown a little bit of purple and orange to create this sort of brownie tone all it is is just a really nice warm tone that just bridges the warms and the colds so by just creating some little floater areas and just sort of an outline and just 
linking the two areas of clouds together it again it's just trying to get a nice seamless transition so as I say just take your time just work areas try to create little sort of dots and areas that have coming off and just trying to figure out where the light and where the heat would be shining on the underneath of these clouds and by just bridging the two together and just creating little out clouds that are coming off it all it's doing is just adding to the detail and we're just building up the foundations just to make it look more realistic so just where it's hotter I'm just adding more of the lighter tone and just where it's darker just add more purple so just hots and colds really really easy as I say this tutorial is for beginners and intermediate so all we're doing is adding some yellow just to highlight that cloud now so I am trying to make the tutorials a little bit harder but as I said previously I don't want to make them too hard that you get left behind so I don't want to put too much detail and emphasize on it so we've got this lovely light effect now and we've got these darkened corners and we've got this lovely lovely sky so we're going to add some highlights to our clouds just to make them look a bit more 3d so as i say this tutorial i want to make harder but i don't want to make it too hard so we're going to make some yellow and lots of white and we're going to add some highlights because we're going to make our clouds look a bit more 3d so this is a bit more advanced still for beginners but i just want to teach you how by putting the shadows on first and then adding highlights to your work you can make things look a bit more 3d seeing you're learning all about the transitions of tones why not teach you some highlights while we're at it because as i say i don't want to make the tutorials too difficult but i don't want you to not learn so i think why not teach you just some tips and tricks that will really really benefit you and your work so just try to think where the light would be coming around so by using a highlight tone by using this white and yellow we're trying to create where the light is creeping around the the clouds but also what it does is it outlines your clouds and makes them look more three-dimensional so by having the dark tone first and then highlighting certain areas of your clouds and having these sort of under bits where the light is sort of hitting and cascading off the clouds what it does it creates a really nice polarity a really nice contrast between hots and colds darks and lights and it just makes your work look so much more 3d and then as your discipline with being able to concentrate and to uh, your drawing skills and your composition skills and your painting skills gets better you'll find that by really understanding how lights and colors work and how tones work you'll find it really really help you just to do some of these little tricks on the light effect just to create realism in your artwork so can you see that light effect is already starting to create a nice um, effect where it looks much more realistic just from having some highlights and some darks so just using a fine liner take your time we're just going to make some of that warm grey which was just black orange and a little bit of purple and some white and all we're going to do is just really with a fine liner just emphasize some of the darks just now we've got the lights so i just want to emphasize some of the darks just having a fine liner and just putting in little bits of detail just little stream like clouds and dots just make it a little bit more photorealistic so take your time just make sure your tones are right just highlight areas darken up areas just go around your clouds just make sure you've got all your little floaters and your edges are nice and prominent just so the clouds stand out against that nice lovely sky and just by darkening up areas what it does it just again just draws your eye to that sun so now we've got that lovely transition between the oranges and that darker tone is really really drawing your eye towards the sun and when we do the water and we do the wet sand in a minute it's going to really really pop and really really create a beautiful light effect that looks really realistic so again look just with a little fine liner i'm just taking that orangey brown tone which was just orange and purple and i'm just doing the same trick just creating some of these floater clouds just highlighting the edges just taking my time now i think our sky is starting to look fantastic 
So let's start working on the rest of the painting when you're happy with it. So when you're happy with your clouds and your transitions, let's dry it and let's measure a nice straight horizon line. And this is we're going to do the mountains. So make sure you've measured it, that it's nice and straight. Make sure your sky is dry before please putting tape on it just in case you lift some of the paint off if it's not dry. So we're going to mix some black, some dark brown and some dark blue. And we're just going to create a really, really dark silhouette tone for our mountains. So all we're going to do is just block it in and because we've got that tape, just come down towards the tape and you should have a nice straight horizon line. So in a minute when we put the water in, it's going to be lovely and straight and it's going to look nice and flat and really, really nice and pretty to the eye. So I think I put a bit too much water on mine, that will teach me. I put too much water in and it came a bit streaky. So I think when I removed my tape, I had a big splodge. So try not to use much water if you're using tape. So I'm just going to take some lavender and orange to make some of that corner sky color that we had earlier. And I'm just going to go around these mountains and just fill in the sky a little bit just to make it look a bit neater while I've got that tape there. So all I'm doing, I'm just filling in the sky color with that lovely bridge tone that we had and I'm just trying to do it so my mountains just look a little bit more emphasized and stand out a bit more against the sky now if you peel off your tape you can see here where I had lots of water on my mountains it's kind of smeared so all I'm gonna do is just use my finger <laughs> like a pro and just wipe it away so please hair dry it before you put your tape on because you'll see in a minute I didn't hair dry mine and I lifted a lot of the paint off the mountains I just painted because they were very watery. So make sure your um, horizon is straight. There's nothing worse than a wonky painting that when you hang it up that your painting's wonky. So just measure your horizon so it's lovely and straight. And we're going to do the water. So we're going to paint some orange and we're going to add some of that lovely bluey purple color so blue purple and lots of white to that orange and we're going to get this lovely sort of i don't know what sort of color that is it's sort of like a tanny blue color very very um strange color but it's very nice <laughs> and just by leaving gaps and using a flat brush all i'm doing is just creating streaks into up to the tape and I want to go right up to the tape because I want a nice flat horizon. And by using my flat brush, I'm just going to go around the edge of the sort of wet sand just to give it a defined edge just so I know where everything is. Well, I've got that color. Now I'm going to add more blue to this mix and a little bit of purple just to cool it down. Because as I say, the further away from the sunlight, the darker and cooler the area is going to get. So we're going to go right up to that tape again, but we're going to leave gaps with my flat brush. I'm just creating lines. So I'm going to create gaps in the underpainting so it looks like waves. So I'm just leaving little space. So I'm using a flat brush, so like a line, sort of shape brush. And I'm just leaving little zigzags. And I'm leaving little shapes and that's creating the illusion of waves. And because we've got the nice transition in color below it it's tricking your eye so just like the sky where we did the background first before we put the clouds on all we're doing is the same trick with the waves so I'm just using that same tone just to create all the sort of froth down here which is sort of the wave as it hits the shore and just add a little bit of white to the mix and I'm just doing a bit lighter tone but same same trick just to put some waves and I'm going to remove my tape and look I pulled off half my mountains so they're all come off so I'm going to retouch up my mountains in a minute but once I get rid of that chalk we have a lovely straight horizon and me being a pro it doesn't take two seconds just to paint back the mountains that's the great thing about acrylics if you make a mistake you just paint it back on So now we've got a lovely straight horizon and we're just filling in these mountains to get rid of 
where I tore the tape off. We're starting to frame the composition. And I just... So I want it to look straight down into the sunlight. So we're going to take some blue and we're going to add it to that mix and a little bit of purple. And we're just going to use a fine liner and we're just going to create an edge for our wave. That's a, bit, a little bit too light. So I'm just going to add a little bit more dark blue and some black to the mix. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. So almost like a Prussian blue. So very dark blue. So blue and black just to create a nice outline for our wave. So just take your time and just outline it. And all that does is it just gives it a nice prominent area of showing you the difference between the wash and the wave. So I'm just outlining the top of it and I'm just trying to create the illusion of detail really. I don't want to go too like detailed with this um, tutorial but I'm just using that same color just to create sort of ripples, sort of caps of wave, all sort of creating the um, the foam sort of area as the as the water hits the shore and it cascades up and it creates all that sort of white sea foam and we get all the sort of zigzags that sort of bubble up against the shore. So again just using a flat brush and that dark mix of blue and black and a little bit of purple all I'm using is the edge of the brush just to create the illusion of waves. So I'm using a really flat brush and I'm just using that darker tone just to sort of come up on these edges and create the illusion of waves and sort of ripples in the water. But it's the brush doing all the work just by tipping it sideways and using its flat edge. I'm just trying to emphasize just to add more detail just to make my work, my water look a bit more 3D just trick your eye now we've got the underpainting underneath so again just like the sky where that underpainting tone is got a seamless transition now that you're adding the detail on top again it just tricks the eye and it's a really really easy way to build up your water and your beach so all we're doing is we're just going right up to the top and we're just using that flat brush. Now if you think the closer to the horizon, the flatter the waves get. So don't do any sort of really loopy waves as you get towards the, towards the sun. You want them very, very flat because the water's getting um, flatter to the view of your eyes. So all I'm doing, as I say, is just using a flat brush and that the brush is doing all the work and I'm just using a lighter tone in the middle because obviously that's where the sun is so I'm just adding a little bit of white to the mix just so it's not as harsh around the sun now I'm going to take the bottom um, the middle sorry blue color that we use for our sky which was just white blue and a tiny bit of purple this color that we had for our sky and I'm just going to edge our water just so again it's got a nice prominent edge between the wet sand and the waves. By just using a thin brush just try to outline it and as I say don't worry if it's too rough or, or messy you can always neaten it up afterwards. It's just to give the water a nice sort of um, highlight and a nice prominent feature just so it looks like it's cascading up against the shore. Because when we add the light effect on that sand, that's going to really, really pop and it's going to really, really um, emphasize the water. So just outline it again with the dark color. If you've gone over it with the um, lighter tone for your um, sea foam, if you've gone over your edges, just get the black and the dark blue and a little bit of purple and just reapply the outline just so you've got a nice dark edge to it. One thing with acrylic paints that I always have is baby wipes because just like there if you ever make a mistake 
you can just use a baby wipe to fix it but by just using the blue and the black we just want to really emphasize certain waves in our water just to make them look a bit more darker a bit more striking so as I say if you make a mistake just use some baby wipes you can always paint over it but what we're trying to do is we're just trying to create the illusion of detail in our water just so it looks like it's fading it off but you've got all those caps of waves and you've got all the sort of lights and dark tones where the lights sort of hit in the water Now while I've got this dark bluey black tone on my nice flat brush, I'm going to tilt the brush sort of diagonally and I'm going to use that to create sort of a drag back effect onto the sand. So where the water is cascading and it's making the sand all nice and wet, I'm just trying to use that sort of dark bluey black tone just to create sort of the illusion of texture in my sand and sort of a sort of drag back effect onto my... Um, wet sand so even though it looks again just like always it looks quite scruffy here and quite um quite um, harsh on the eye we're going to paint and blend it into our sand and our wet sand in a minute so it's just another little layer of detail we're just adding in now and again it's just going to try to transition the colors between the hots and the colds when we do our sand in a minute So we're going to try to create the light effect now on our wet sand and that's going to really really draw the viewers eye in. So first thing we're going to do is create a really bright orange. So we're going to take some yellow, some white and some orange and we're just going to sort of mirror where the sun is. So we're going to have all this sort of light pouring down onto our wet sand and because of that it's going to reflect really really harshly and make a gorgeous sort of bright orange effect on this wet sand to create sort of a mirror aspect so all we're trying to do is match what's in the sky above onto the water below so and what we're going to do is um, we'll do it on the waves as well but first we're going to do it on the sand so all I'm doing is I'm tipping the um, flat brush um, upwards so it's got a, f um, a nice flat edge and then I'm going sideways and just dragging it across just to again create texture and then I'm turning it completely so it's on its flat edge and just rubbing the paint into the canvas so just add a little bit more heat so a little bit more orange and yellow just so it's brighter so look how much brighter that is and we're just trying to mirror what's above us onto that wet sand so again just cover up those rough edges but just by leaving bits of them and just having the implication of detail what it does is it just gives an extra layer of detail just a little bit more texture on your sand and on your wash so all it is is just trying to blend the colors together and by taking some yellow we're just again mirroring what's above so we're trying to have it sort of zigzagging where it's sort of hitting the shore and just sort of bouncing off it so we're going to try to mirror these areas as well so we're going to use that lavender tone that we had in the sky which was purple and lots of white and I'm going to tip the brush so it's flat and I'm just going to scrape down and try to create sort of a reflection so look just tipping it just trying to create streaks with that color that's in the sky above so just try to blend the two tones together and if you tip your brush diagonally again you can use it sort of like to have sort of like the drag back from the wash into the sand you can just highlight the edges just using the exact same tone so already the tones are really really working they're really really creating that great 
sort of contrast. So I'm just going to use that same tone just to sort of lighten up this area, just so it looks like the the sky is sort of and the reflection is all the same. And I'm going to take some orange and yellow, and I'm going to go straight down from the sun. So straight down. So what is on the water is going to be on the sun. I'm just going to add a little bit more white to the mix. I'm just going to go around that area there. Just trying to blend the tones all together. Just create a bit of detail in the sort of reflections. So I'm just going to get some yellow and I'm just going to do the exact same trick. So come straight down from the sun and create sort of a reflection onto that wet sand and then use some white just to sort of mirror the sun onto that beach. Just use some of that orange just to heat up areas and just gently blend it into the lighter tone just so again the transition just looks the same as the clouds above so look just some yellow and a fine liner and then some white and just sort of create zigzags so it looks like the water is sort of rippling down and there you go just a little mirror super easy Just soften up areas, try to get your transitions just like the sky, just really nice and smooth. So we're going to take some brown and some orange, we're going to create sort of a burnt sienna colour, sort of the colour that we had the canvas, and we're just going to have an area between the wet sand and our darker sand, because again this area is going to be picking up the light, so it just looks like the light is hitting that sort of sand sort of giving it a bit of texture just very little paint and all i'm doing is just dragging it onto the canvas and just sort of smearing it there with my finger but again it's just to give the illusion of sort of bits of the sand bit of the texture on the sand just picking up light just sort of reflecting down from that sunlight so look the effect is working already it's looking really really pretty already so we're going to take some black and some brown and some really dark blue and we're just going to really darken up this corner because I really want it to be framed so the lights really stand out so we really want it dark and obviously in this corner I'm going to sign it so I want that area to be dark so I'm just going along the edge again it doesn't matter if it's scruffy we can blend it all in in a minute but I just want to make it really, really emphasize sort of areas now. So we're just going to work everything now. We're just going to neaten up everything, just finish the painting off. So we're just going to get a fine liner and just make that edge look really nice and prominent. Just going off into the distance and sort of cascading back as it fades off into the distance. So let's just blend all this area here, just make it a bit softer. So all it is the same tone, blue, black and brown. And I'm just blending it in. And what that does is it's going to really highlight our wet sand. And again, just sort of creating bumps, the illusion of bumps and sort of leaving that underpainting by just sort of using little dots and lines. We're just creating texture in our sand just so it looks a bit more realistic. So as I say, all these tutorials are very easy, but you can keep going and keep going and keep going with a reference photo and do every bump, every wave, every dot of cloud. And that is the difference between being a really photographic um, artist and just being disciplined enough to do that. So as I say, the tones are what really make the painting but if you can work on your realism and your discipline to add all the details 
and just your concentration level and your focus and just really really enjoy what you, you're painting so if you really really enjoy sunsets paint lots of sunsets because more likely you'll be really good at them because you're really enjoying it so that's the secret the more you enjoy something the better you'll be at it so again look just taking some white and blue dab of purple we're just highlighting the wash that's hitting the shore the edge of that wave I'm just trying to make it look a bit less flat by just adding this tone so if you just remember like light blues and whites are really really good for highlights and then by adding like here the darker more purpley blue you can have still a highlight but it's a bit more shadowy and a bit more cooler and it just looks a bit more realistic and again it just bridges the tones between the hots and the cools because it's got a bit of purple in it and it's a bit darker blue it just makes everything just look a bit more realistic and because it matches the corners of our sky it just makes everything match so our tones are all matching so the sky above and the water below it are all matching and they all look nice and because of that it's tricking your eye and it just makes it look a lot more detailed than it is <laughs> win win so while we've got that tone all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna darken up this area here because just as I say it's the furthest from the Sun so it's gonna be the coolest sort of area so I'm just using a blender brush and I'm just sort of gently using the side of the brush just to blend that in. Just use my fingers a bit more. Why not? And it's just because that area is getting the less amount of sunlight and the less amount of heat, it's going to be a lot more in the shadow and it's just going to be a bit cooler. So again, just reworking areas just to you're happy with it. Try to get all the sort of sea froth and all I do with sea froth is I just do little zigzags with the white and blue and I just create little zigzags and that looks like all the sort of froth and ripples and sort of sea foam that sort of comes up on the wash. And by doing the same, just neating up areas, just that orange and yellow. just emphasizing all the highlights why not use some of that color just to sort of create some nice sort of streaks with a light where that water sort of reflecting back into the wave it's leaving really nice sharp highlights onto my shore here this looks really nice onto our beach Wow, this sunset effect is looking amazing on our beach so look all we're doing is just using that sort of Naples yellow which is yellow and white a tiny bit of orange just to create some shimmer on our on our sand now I'm going to take some burnt sienna and just on this corner burnt sienna is just orange and brown I'm just going to highlight this sort of ridge here of our mountains because I think it's going to look a bit nicer. Again, a little trick again here. I'm just adding some Prussian blue, which is blue and black. So burnt sienna, which is orange and brown, into some blue and black. I'm just going to try to create the illusion that this um, mountain is getting the sun hitting it and it's just making it look like the transition in the color by using some orange now to make it look like the light is hitting that mountain ridge in the far distance and just blending the tones into the mountain ridge and just make it a little bit more realistic again using the tones now you can use the same trick for things like trees and things in the far distance all it is is just orange and burnt sienna into a very dark blue 
and then into black and that gives a really nice transition of hots and colds. Now what I'm doing is I'm just using the fine liner and some black and brown and some blue and I'm just drawing little bits of sort of debris on the sand and sort of bumps and ridges. As I say I don't want to make it too a hardcore and a photorealistic because it's a more of a lesson on tones for this beautiful sunset acrylic painting tutorial but as I say me being me always go back and forth with my work now all I'm doing is I'm just filling in some just little dots just create sort of illusion of waves and where I've got that dark corner I've signed my work so it's really nice and prominent and I'm just darkening it up that corner I'm just putting some nice shimmer on my water here my wet sand she's in a fine liner so as you can see by darkening up the corners it creates a really lovely place to sign we've got this lovely light effect we've got this beautiful transition in our clouds and on our wet sand we've got this lovely shimmer and reflection on our water we've got a nice brilliant light effect and because we've got the um, gradient in the color between our tones and we've got our darkened corners with our signature nice and prominent everything looks really really good and we've got this great build up between hots and colds to create a beautiful sunset beach i'm really really happy with it it's a really nice simple um video a nice paint tutorial for beginners and here it is all photographed so it's a gorgeous piece it's really really nice really nice and simple i hope you've really enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe we have plenty of seascape tutorials we have forest tutorials we've got lots of step-by-step -step painting tutorials here on my channel so please 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 like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and that will get the videos out to more artists that will hopefully enjoy them and learn so thank you thank you so much for watching my name is Murray and I hope you've enjoyed the video so take care everybody bye